This week's video is um, a talk I gave last week online on Zoom to um, the Derby chapter of Creative Mornings. Creative Mornings is a big global non-profit uh, creative community and they have kind of like weekly, monthly meetups. Uh, obviously with COVID-19 we haven't had that so they've been doing them a lot on Zoom and I've been involved with the Creative Mornings crew at Derby a few times before so kind of this is a talk that I gave recently and it's on the concept of transit. Transit was the global theme that they had uh, for this month's set of talks from around the world so um, this is my uh, take on that topic. The talk's really about um, uh, productivity and achievement and um, the kind of the key mottos that I kind of try and live and work by. So hopefully it's a little bit different to camera tricks and photography hacks and stuff, but hopefully you'll get some benefit of it. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. So when Tim first approached me to do this Creative Mornings talk, I figured, what the hell, this will be easy. I photograph movement for a living. But then the more I thought about it, the more I realised that I wanted to show you more than just my favourite movement images and regale you with tales of adventures that I had last year, including watching the sunrise over Doha in about five o'clock in the morning, which, for the record, was pretty dang special. But the more I thought about it, the more I realised that I wanted to talk about my favourite saying and my motto for life, which I actually have tattooed right on my left forearm. I've actually got six tattoos in total, but this one has been a huge motivator for my life and it's incredibly special. And I want to talk to you about it today at this Creative Mornings talk because it fit perfectly with the theme of transit. So if we rewind the clock a few years back, I was working um, as a web developer and I was really, really heavily into like the personal development space. You know, the kind of thing, reading the Tony Robbins books, listening to Tim Ferriss podcasts and absorbing everything Gary Vaynerchuk ever said. I was a full on PD junkie. I wanted it as soon as I could, as often as I could, whenever I could. One thing I really got into was kind of like films and the motivational quotes and sayings from within them and I'd watch them over and over and over and over again to get myself in a really good mental state even though at the time I didn't really felt like I was doing anything with that knowledge. One of the ones that really stood out for me was a clip from the 2006 film Rocky Balboa. If you don't know the one I'm talking about you definitely will once you've seen it. Well you used to fit right here. I'd hold you up they say to your mother, this kid's going to be the best kid in the world. This kid's going to be somebody better than anybody ever knew. And you grew up good and wonderful. It was great just watching. Every day was like a privilege. Then the time come for you to be your own man and take on the world, and you did. But somewhere along the line, you changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame. Like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. It really, really resonated with me. I don't know why, but it really, really did. You, me or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning's done. Going through a lovely midlife crisis and to the shock and horror of my mother, I decided to set out and get it tattooed on my forearm. I wanted Just Keep Moving written down on me all the time so that I didn't forget it. Because it actually felt like something really, really important that I needed to remember. As I got Welsh dragon blood running through my veins, I decided to go one step further and I had that in tattooed inscribed on me in Welsh. Looks pretty cool, right? 
My main reason for getting it at the time was that I was in the middle of marathon training. And for me, I needed a permanent reminder to keep slugging away when those hard miles kicked in. It became a really powerful reminder on my long runs to keep digging in and see it all the way through and to importantly, keep moving forward. But over the years, as I reflected on it at different points in my life, the motto, keep moving forward, became hugely powerful and a much, much bigger thing and one that as a creative, I've lived by on a daily basis. You see, every time in my life when it's been hard or I felt stuck or I've been in a difficult situation, if I've just kept moving and I've taken some kind of action, things generally start to work out. At least, at a minimum, things start to happen. If I sat and did nothing and if I sit there and allow nothing to happen, nothing will happen because I'm not doing anything to affect that change. Sometimes when we feel stuck in our creative problems, we can struggle to find a way out and we can struggle to see the solution. But what if you didn't look for the solution and what instead if you just looked at what action you could take right now? Any action, literally any action, just to keep moving forward. Let's put this in terms of examples that I can give you kind of from my very, very recent life. Over this summer, I've achieved a bucket list goal for me and I've run an ultra marathon. If you don't know what an ultra marathon is, it's basically a running distance, anything over 26.2 miles, which is the standard marathon distance. So in theory, you can run 26.3 miles and you can class yourself as an ultra runner. But ultra marathons, ultra runs tend to fall into different categories. They're usually around about 50 Ks, which is about 31 miles, or 50 miles, or even 100 K and 100 miles. There are some very, very crazy people out there who even do stuff that's 200 miles plus long. When I started running about 10 years ago, I was introduced to endurance sport by a friend. I was four stone overweight. I was looking for something that would help me get a little bit fitter and a bit more active. And he was an Ironman athlete and insane. He would go off and do 200 mile bike rides on a weekend and not think anything of it. From the early days, I was infused with a love of endurance sport and long distance running, particularly kind of floated to the surface. Back then, my big hero was a guy called Ray Zahab, who ran over 4,300 miles across the Sahara Desert uh, with some friends of his as part of an ultra adventure run. The romantic feel of that, of running long, of having these big epic adventures, really, really resonated with me. It was really something that kind of I got really excited about by reading and watching stuff online and on YouTube. And I thought, that's the stuff for me. I never really felt comfortable as a short 5K or 10K runner. I wasn't particularly excited about getting on the track. But the idea of disappearing off onto a trail somewhere for six, seven, eight, nine hours really, really appealed to me. And it was that that I kind of strived to work to as the months and the years went on. That was the kind of the fire that burnt inside me when I started running. But I was never able to put all the pieces together in order to enable me to run that long stuff. I got pretty close a few times and actually managed to complete a marathon at 26.2 miles back in 2016. But after a few shorter races, immediately after that big marathon, I kind of dropped off my training. I stopped running consistently and I focused instead on launching my business, which is about three, four years ago now. And the consistency in my running and my training at that point really, really kind of slipped away. It became a part of my life that wasn't as important anymore. I've always run in those times in the last three or four years, but it was never consistent. Fast forward to the start of lockdown and I was about a stone heavier than I wanted to be. And I needed some kind of mental outlet to take me away from the depression of the lockdown and the pandemic that we're all suffering. As a creative, as a business owner over the last eight months or so that we've been in the pandemic. I've lost about £25,000 of work, which is for a sole trader like me doing what I do, quite a substantial chunk of money. Um, I've spent the last kind of six months just watching events and races um, and client bookings and bits and pieces just getting scratched off the calendar and postponed and moved and then cancelled and delayed and then cancelled. And at the start of lockdown, that was something that was really, really difficult. So I decided to get back into some regular running. It was only meant to be sort of three or four miles every day or every couple of days, but it was enough of a mental outlet for me to get out of the house, get exercise and get some fresh air and get into nature. And the more I did, the more I realized that I wanted to go for that solo, solo ultra distance run. If I didn't have the time to do it now, when I literally had nothing to do, I was probably never going to get it done. 
This ultimately led me to running a 33-mile ultra race in the Peak District with a race company called Mavericks uh, back in September. To say that it was a long day in the office would probably be an understatement. I was out for 7 hours and 40 plus minutes. It was a very, very long, hard day. Um, we climbed up over the height of Ben Nevis at points from the cumulative distance that we were running on. It was a really, really long day. And I did it simply by keeping moving forward. It was that simple. Sounds simple. It wasn't simple. But that was the basis of what I was doing was just to keep moving forward. You don't run those kind of distances and think about running that distance. What you do is you run to the next checkpoint. You run to the next hill. You run to the next point in the scenery that you can see you run to literally the next fence post and I remember running through fields at around about 20 22 23 miles we were running through three or four fields I was in a really really bad place I was really really struggling and I was just thinking about getting to the edge of each field and not having to worry about anything else because if you think about the whole distance as a whole it's really, really hard to kind of get your brain to wrap around that. So you have to go for slightly smaller action points along the way. The trick is to keep moving. Time at that point becomes irrelevant. As long as you're moving, you'll finish. If you stop and you stop moving forward, you're not going to finish. That's just how it is. What matters is that you just keep moving forward. Unfortunately, like a sicko, I've actually run two of these things now um, in the space of two weeks. I actually ran my second one um, on Sunday, just gone uh, a few days ago, um, and I went through the 50k marker around about an hour faster than I did back in September um, in just under six hours, five hours, 59 minutes and 20 seconds to be precise. Um, I'd actually tried to run the ultra distance and the course that I did on Sunday back in August, but had quite serious problems with my kidneys and then ended up breaking a toe um, and then kind of lost that chance. So ended up going into the race instead out in the Peak District to do that. But then when I did the Peak District race and I completed it and I knew I could do that distance, I kind of knew that I wanted to go back and finish off that attempt uh, that I tried in August. I'd got really, really close last time. I got to like 25 miles. I was about five hours in. Like I felt like I was going really, really well. But in the last sort of hour or so, my kidneys started to shut down and I was getting quite seriously ill. Um, so I knew I kind of wanted to go back and get that finished. So on Sunday, just gone, I've, I've literally gone out there and done it again and ticked that box off. And to be able to have say I've done one ultra marathon for me is key, but it's really special to say that I've been able to do two, especially in the space of two weeks. And it was just a mile at a time, a section at a time, ticking the miles off, ticking the steps off, watching the miles tick past on the watch, knowing that as long as I kept moving, as long as I kept pushing forward, that was all that mattered. And it was actually around about the 22, 21, 22 mile mark that I realized that the motto that I have tattooed on my arm, just keep moving, would actually be a much better thing to talk about to you today than kind of lots of fancy lovely pictures and actually talk about how that affects us and how as creatives the idea of transit and moving forward is really really important we all get stuck in life we've all got these lofty creative goals that we all want to achieve and over the last year as creatives all of us have been stress tested mentally and our businesses have been stress tested as we've gone through this horrible global pandemic but the best way I've found to do this and the best way I've found to keep going is just to keep moving forward every day. Little action steps, little goals ticked off, little tasks ticked off every single day, every single week, every single month. And having things to work to and working in small steps to those goals every single day. Little steps in the right direction are better than no steps at all. So if you're struggling to come up with ideas for a design or you're struggling to finish a design why not just grab a pen and a piece of paper and sketch some ideas out for the morning if you're finding it hard to come up with your next social media campaign grab a piece of paper and a pen grab your laptop and why not just write rubbish for an hour and see what comes out you might be surprised just what comes out of you when you're just moving forward when you're just doing stuff to make stuff happen the problem most of us have is that we dismiss these kind of small action steps because they don't get us to our ultimate goal particularly quickly. We feel like we should do something that achieves the goal in that moment and that's actually the wrong way to think. Achieving a goal, whether it's running some 
stupid ass distance race, whether it's launching a business, whether it's pitching to a client, whether it's finishing a magic, massive project is actually about small steps. It's about small tasks completed. You don't go from zero to a hundred in one step. You've got to go through each incremental movement. And for the motto on my life to say, just keep moving forward is so important to me as a creative because it reminds me just to keep going forward. If I'd have started my business three, four years ago and thought, right, in the first week, I want to have 20 clients and I want to be turning over X pounds a month and I want to be working with this client, this client, and this client and doing these events and these races. It would have been unsustainable. But by thinking, right, today I'm going to speak to three new clients. Today I'm going to put four new pictures out onto Instagram. Today I'm going to contact this potential client. I'm going to contact this potential race. And if you repeat that every single day, you actually move forward an awful lot quicker than you think you will. And stuff starts to happen. When you're moving and when you're in transit, as this theme for today's talk is, the universe, in my opinion, kind of conspires with you to make stuff happen. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I've worked relentlessly for weeks and weeks and weeks on projects and pitching to clients and all that kind of stuff and you feel like nothing's happening and then eventually the tipping point happens and then all those things start to work and it's because you've kept moving forward and if you don't do that if you just sit there and wait then actually what you find is nothing happens at all because you're never taking any kind of action some of you might already know that um a key part of my morning routine, so I've got this like big morning routine that I do, it takes me about an hour to do every day, it's really, really important to me, it starts my day off really, really well. One of those things that I do in that morning routine is journaling, so I write for about 15, 20 minutes and it's usually just kind of what's in my head and what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling and it's a really good way of getting that stuff out of my head and onto paper. But there's two things I do after I've journaled as part of that journaling practice that are really, really important. The first one I do is to write down one thing that I'm really, really grateful for that day. So it could be as simple as uh, coffee when I'm really tired. It could be uh, something like I'm really grateful for a client that I'm working with today or a project that's gone really, really well. It could be all sorts of different things, but that sets you, me and will set you into a really, really good mind frame. The other thing that I do, which is kind of the reason for me telling you this, because I think it's really important, is I write down five things that I want to achieve that day. It's known as the power list. It comes from a guy called Andy Frisella. If you don't know who Andy Frisella is, definitely worth checking him out online. He's a bit sweary. I apologize. American, quite opinionated, very sweary, but actually has got some really, really sensible things in his head. And his concept of the power list is really, really good. I don't even think it's his concept, but it's one that he talks about quite a lot. So the problem with to-do lists ultimately is you can have a list of like 40 things to do for that day. And it's like, I have no idea where to start. I have no idea what to do. Like it all seems too overwhelming. I'm going to go and get myself another cup of coffee or I'm going to go out for a walk. So to-do lists of that magnitude become like way too big. They can become way too unmanageable. So what the power list does is it allows you to focus on the five things you need to do, five things you need to do that day that move you forward, that tick the needle over like literally one little step, but it's enough just to keep you moving forward. Those things need to be kind of business and goal related and creative goal related um, if you're going to use this the way it's intended. What I tend to do nine times out of ten is it will be creative focused, it will be work focused, it will be contact client X, it will be invoice client C, it will be finish off this project, it will be deliver this image, blah, 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 blah. And those things just move me forward all the time. They're always slowly moving me forward. However, if I'm just kind of struggling mentally, um, as creatives, we do have this kind of rhythmic roller coaster ride. I've often referred to it as like the creative roller coaster. You have these massive highs and you feel amazing and it's brilliant and like you're living on top of the world and then the next day you just at rock bottom and nothing makes sense. I remember the very first big um, worldwide event that I ever did. Um, it was the Leeds World Triathlon Series. It was a really, really, really big deal for me. Um, I'd gone up there with kind of no real hopes or aspirations for it, but like my image had been the image that kind of the winner had used from one of the races. And it just, I woke up the following morning to just this huge kind of like buzz going through my social media feed from people resharing and commenting and all this kind of stuff. And it was just going crazy. But then the following day, 
I was out hanging my washing out on the line thinking, so I've gone from like this high to like this low and now I don't know what to do with myself because I knew I had like a week or so before I had any more work because it was quite early on in the business at that point. So to understand that we all have these creative roller coasters is really, really important. And on those days where I'm at the bottom of that kind of run of that roller coaster, that power list becomes go for a run. That power list becomes make sure you stay in your calories. I track my calories every day just to make sure I'm kind of being accountable for what I eat, all that kind of stuff. It can be things like, you know, drink th three glasses of water. It can be the, the basic stuff that keeps you moving that day that's personal because it's a you feel like it's a really difficult day. And you know how it is. You wake up in the morning, you know whether that's going to be a great day or whether you're just not quite on it. But the power list is really key because it allows you, whatever you're putting on that list, to keep moving forward. It's not about complete this massive task. It's about I need to do this one thing and I need to do this other thing and this other thing and this other thing and this other thing. Once you've completed the power list, you can do what the heck you like, right? If I finish my five things by half past ten in the morning, technically, if I wanted to, I can have the rest of the day off. And sometimes I do because I've done the things that day that move me forward. But sometimes you get on such a roll, once you've done those five things, you just carry on. And sometimes you get to the end of the day, you haven't got any of those things done, or you've got two or three of those things done. But the idea of the power list is just to keep moving you forward a little bit every single day. What a lot of people do, what a lot of business owners do, what a lot of creatives do, is they have these big flurries of kind of work days. They work for like two or three days, and then they stop. And then it feels like a grind to get going again. But actually, if you pace yourself and do five actions a day, three actions a day, seven actions a day, you actually start moving forward and build momentum an awful lot, lot quicker. I put the success of my business and my work down to the fact that for the first 18 months to two years, I grafted really, really hard. And I did that by following the power list religiously every single day for nearly two years. Five actions every single day, even at the very first day of the business, on my birthday, 7th of April, um, on my birthday, when I launched the business, I had five action points to do. I did those five action points. That was the day done. I won that day. I'm quite happy. And I did that every single day. And I didn't complete every five every, every time because that's not how life works. But the fact that I was ticking off small actions and trying to move forward every single day made a huge, huge difference. The power list is basically the creative's equivalent of a mile at a time. It's those little by little actions that add up, that make the difference. So as we roll into quarter four of 2020 and try and write this whole year off, you might start to think about the things that you want to achieve at the end of the year before we tick into 2021, or even the things that you want to achieve in 2021 and beyond. If you're doing that already, or you're likely to do that soon, keep in mind the motto I have inked on my arm for the rest of eternity. That concept of keep moving forward. Try not to achieve your massive creative goals. Try not to kind of feel like you've got to do everything now. Small actions repeated every single day actually brings you an awful lot more kind of satisfaction and success and achievement than actually you think it will do. A step in the right direction is still a step. It still brings you closer to the things that you want ultimately. By staying still and doing nothing, you actually end up going nowhere. So remember, when you go away from this talk um, for the rest of the day or this weekend or in six months' time when you're thinking, I'm stuck, I don't know what to do, remember, Ben's got it tattooed on his arm. Just keep moving forward.